There are roughly 30,000 teachers in Chicago that are pro protesting right now, and they're on strike because of the fact that they can't come up with an agreement with Rahm Emanuel. Now, Rahm Emanuel has said that one of the main things that he wants to focus on is education reform, but his idea of education reform is pushing public schools toward charters, um, and of course, charter schools are publicly funded but privately run. And also keep in mind that Rahm Emanuel has children that go to private schools. Mm -hmm. So um, the unions have had an issue with him since the beginning because he's calling for longer work hours for these teachers. Uh, the school board had promised to increase the teacher's salary by f 4 percent last year. However, they reneged on that. Rahm Emanuel said, well, okay, fine. Uh, they didn't increase the salary like they promised, so I will promise to increase your salary by 16 percent over the next four years. All right, so look, it looks like they're going to have an agreement on at least on salary, even though Rahm Emanuel in Chicago initially tried to screw over the teachers. So I understand why they're mad. But look, this is a larger issue. Be before we get into the details of this particular case, you got to understand something. The Republicans have ta targeted teachers unions all across the country because teachers unions are one of the very few top donors that go to Democrats and not Republicans. They're I think one of maybe two left in the top Ten that go to the Democratic Party rather than the Republican Party. So they have been slated for destruction. Now, part of what annoys me about this is that Democrats, like Rahm Emanuel, go along. So they, and unfortunately, President Obama's team, Arne Duncan, etc. Oh, pri privatize, privatize, private school choice, school choice. Now, okay, now look, it, that's an interesting argument, and it, it and it deserves an in, the debate that we should have in this country over it, right? But I'm afraid that that is not what's happening here. That's not what's happening. What's happening instead is, let's crush the public schools, blame it on the teachers, so that the teachers unions will have less money to donate to Democrats. And of course, who, who would be the one Democrat who is leading that charge? Rahm Emanuel. So the fact that he's having trouble in Chicago uh, is news to my ears. Of course I want the strike result because I want the students to get an education. I want every and I want the teachers to get what they deserve, etc. Right? But Rahm Emanuel, legendary Rahm Emanuel, what the hell? The murder rate in Chicago is skyrocketing. He's got a teacher strike. There's ten cities. This guy is a horrendous mayor, a horrendous politician. He always has been. Part of the reason is he takes conservative principles and applies them while pretending to be a liberal. So not only does he screw over the people that he's trying to serve by being right winger, but then he screws over progressives. By, protect, by people think that his enormously ineffectual policies are left wing when in fact they're right wing. All right, so let me clarify a number of things because this story is a lot more complex than uh, you know the mainstream media is making it out to be. And to be fair to Rahm Emanuel and the unions, the unions have been very successful in the negotiation process because they've gotten pretty much everything that they've wanted. So, for instance, Rahm Emanuel agreed to the salary increase, 16 percent over the next four years. If you look at the salary for these teachers, on average, they're making much more money than teachers in the national average. Okay, so in Chicago, they make 76 thousand a year in their salary. That's not including the amount of money that they pay for uh, their health insurance and their benefits. It's around $71,000 when you take that into account. Uh, the average U.S. teacher makes about $56,000. All right, I, I want to say a bunch of things about that. First of all, Rom, as we just explained, tried to screw them in the first place. So they negotiated successfully to get back to where they, what the, uh, one of the original promises was. Actually, the original promise was sky high by Rahm Emanuel. Why did he give that? Because he actually increased the number of hours they were working. So now right. they got back to where they were in terms of the second promise, but that's because they're working many more hours. No, that, okay, so I want to respond to that as well, because another thing that Rahm Emanuel promised to do is he would hire 500 teachers to teach non-core classes, and that includes music classes, art classes, you know, uh, non-English and math classes. Uh, so these teachers would not have to work longer hours. They might work like an extra 14 minutes a day, but uh, it, it wouldn't be what he had planned originally. So they're still getting, and look, I'm not saying that this is wrong. I, I am glad that the, the unions fought hard and they're getting exactly what they wanted. They are getting the salary inc increase. The teachers don't have to work too many hours. Now, the part that no one is emphasizing enough, Jenk, is the standardized testing, because this is what they can't come to an agreement on. 
Rahm Emanuel wants to evaluate these teachers, but what is the effective way of evaluating them? It is not standardized testing. However, 40% of the rubric will focus on standardized testing, and that is absolutely wrong. The unions won't have it, the teachers won't have it. It's extremely unfair, and as a result, they're striking because Rahm Emanuel will not budge on that particular issue. So I have more on that. First of all, they say, hey, listen, you're comparing us to the teachers in the suburbs and saying you got to do it as well, otherwise you're going to have issues. You might get fired, you might get uh, lose uh, wages, etc., etc. Right? So, but in the suburbs, they got it great. They, they can take home the books. They got, you know, they got lighted football fields, etc. Whereas here, our resources are horrible for for the schools. Some of the kids in some of the inner city schools across the country can't even take home the books. They got to share them in the classroom. Now you're saying, okay, but you got to do as well as the teacher in terms of the standard test scores. As in the suburbs, it's not really fair. On the salary issue, yes, it's higher. But first of all, the cost of living in Chicago is much higher. So if you're a teacher in Kansas, of course you should get less. Not because I don't love the teacher in Kansas, but because but it costs less to live in Kansas. To be fair though, look, Chicago is the third largest school district in this country. Los Angeles is the second largest school district in, in this country. And teachers in Los Angeles are making significantly less than teachers in Chicago. Look, I, I am all for paying teachers a fair salary. They are you know, teaching the future of this country and they should get paid more. So I'm not against that. But comparatively speaking, teachers in Chicago are not making a little bit of money. They're making a decent salary. I hear you on that. And finally, like I don't want people to get me wrong. Do I want accountability for teachers? Of course I do. If it's my kids going to that school, do I think the teachers should be able to just say, oh, well, I don't want any accountability. Sad day for you. Okay, I'll just teach them any way that I like or not teach them any way I like, and there's nothing you could do about it. But of course we're not in favor of that, and even the teachers are not in favor of that. They're just saying, hey, just don't base it on the standardized test scores because right. that's an irrational model. Now, I don't know that there is a better model, and you know, and I don't know that the teachers have proposed that. But to me, that's a micro issue, and one that it deserves debate. But the macro issue is the whole thing is a trick. Like they take something like accountability and they blow it up like Rahm Emanuel does in this case, as if it's the only issue, so that he can turn around and go, see goddamn teachers unions, they don't even want to be held accountable. It's all their fault, their fault, their fault. Well, that's not the case. And so I feel like the more we have this as a legitimate point of conversation, the more the bad guys win, the more they take money out of the public school system, which by the way built this country. I mean the New York City public school system in the 1950s was fantastic. You should read Malcolm Gladwell's book Outliers on that. And what did it produce? It produced great growth in New York City in the upcoming decades because of that. Now we keep tearing away at public schools and saying no no school choice teachers suck etc cetera, etc cetera. and next thing you know our public schools are a disaster and then they turn around and go aha uh -huh, you see that that proves our case we need to take more money out of the public school system it doesn't prove your case and so on the macro level looking at this the fact that some teachers in the country are fighting back against right-wing zealots like Rahm Emanuel to me is a great sign